Greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to AMC Mailbag. This is not AMC Movie Talk. This is AMC Mailbag. Now, the way this show came about was, you know, we have a mailbag segment on AMC Movie Talk, but we can only answer three to four questions a day, and we get like 150 to 200 emails from you guys every single day. So we decided to start this new show, AMC Mailbag, that we'll do two or three times a week, exclusively to answer your questions that you send in to the mailbag. And you can send your questions anytime to amcmovietalk at gmail.com. Once again, that email address is amcmovietalk at gmail.com. And maybe we can get your question answered either on this show, AMC Mailbag, or on the daily AMC Movie Talk. This is a much more laid back show. As you can tell, I'm just sitting here at my desk. I'm relaxing. I've got my drink. Uh, I'm here just to talk movies with you guys, and I'm very fortunate today to be joined by the one and the only, he is uh, the most popular guy on the show, far more popular than me, Mr. John Schnepp. John, how you doing? Hey, what's going on? Yeah, it was great to see a lot of uh, a lot of AMC Movie Talk people in uh, Phoenix at the Phoenix Comic Con. Thanks for coming out, and I'm glad you guys watched the show. It's always fun to be on it. And uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, of course, you're working on your documentary film right now, The Death yeah. of Superman Lives, What Happened? How's that coming along? It's coming along really good. I'm actually going to interview some uh, comic people at uh, the Philadelphia Wizard World coming up this weekend. So I'll be in Philadelphia doing the convention, doing a couple panels, and uh, shooting some footage. So wear your Superman uh, t-shirts, everybody, in Philadelphia. All right. Well, let's get started with the first question of the day. And the first question comes to us from Morixion. Oh, dude, you got to forgive me if I'm butchering your name. Sanchez writes, my question is, if Marvel ever gets the rights to Spider-Man, which I'm telling you that will never happen, but if they ever get the rights to Spider-Man and even possibly some other superheroes, X-Men, Fantastic Four, etc., do you think that they would do a Civil War storyline? Personally, I love Civil War and would love to see it play out on the big screen. Keep up the good work and have a great day. Thanks a lot so much for the question. Yeah, I've talked a lot about how why this could never happen. Uh, but if you want to ask theoretically, if they ever did get Spider-Man and Fantastic Four, could they make Civil War? I think before we really get into the answer, though, Schnepp, um, why don't you tell everybody basically who doesn't understand or doesn't know what Civil War is? What is Civil War? Well, Civil War is basically like all the Marvel superheroes fighting against each other. They basically like broke up all the teams and it was Captain America and a bunch of superheroes versus Iron Man and a bunch of superheroes. They didn't agree on something, and they just butted heads, and it became a civil war, so to speak, of superheroes. So um, even if Spider-Man, if they got all the superheroes back, I don't know if they would do something like Civil War because Civil War works really well with comic books because it's like a monthly tie-in with all the characters where you can like read basically like, 20 comics in one month and they all tie together to form a giant story uh within movies it would take years to do like four episodes of civil war so i don't know if it would really work out too well if they did a civil war movie or uh, like the idea of you know captain america bucking against iron man and avengers 3 you know they could add a little of that element i think into one of the movies but to have it actually be the actual civil war that everyone experienced reading that giant like 700 episode 7000 issue crossover i don't think it's going to happen so yeah i mean obviously that's been the dream of a lot of people is that if marvel could get all these characters back which will never happen but if they could to do a civil war movie and actually when you think about it if marvel if there was ever a scenario that existed where they could get spider-man back and x-men and fantastic four and get all those guys back and they could do a civil war the irony here is, is that a civil war is really the only thing they can do. I mean, if you're going to get all like so many characters that will just saturate everything so much, what are they going to fight? You right. know, are they going to fight Unicron? Are they going to fight, right. you know, there's really only one thing to do. And that is have a civil war. Basically, they have to fight each other. And that's the only direction they have to go left. So if they could get them back. I don't think they would do it simply because I don't think they'd want to run the risk of having some of their heroes look like villains and have people take sides and blah, 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 blah. So I'd right. love to see it, but personally, I, I just don't see it happening. All right, let's move on to the next question. The next question comes to us from Rob Hardy, who writes, Hi, John. Love your show and all of your co-hosts. 
I was wondering what you thought of the latest addition to the Blood and Ice Cream tr trilogy, The World's End. I heard a few weeks back that you like Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, so I was a bit surprised when you never mentioned it, especially after the trailer was released. Um, well, Rob, the reality is that I am not just a big fan of Nick Frost and Simon Pegg and especially Edgar Wright, the writer and director. I, I absolutely adore these guys completely. I love their films up to this point, although I wasn't a fan of Paul, uh, but that one didn't involve Edgar Wright. That was just Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. The reason I didn't mention World's End when the trailer came out is honestly, I didn't like the trailer. And I'm dying to see this film. I'm so excited to see their next film together but I didn't like the trailer. Now, a trailer's just a trailer. That does not mean at all that the movie's not going to be any good, just because I didn't like the trailer. I, it's just that I wasn't really enthusiastic about the trailer, and so being a huge fan of Edgar Wright and a huge fan of Simon Pegg and a huge fan of Nick Frost, I just decided best not to talk about The World's End since I didn't like the trailer until I saw, this is just me as a movie fan talking, until I saw something that did excite me, that's when I'd want to talk about it. So that's why you didn't hear me talk about it. What about you, Schnepp? Have you been looking forward to World's End? Uh, most definitely. I I love Spaced. If you guys have never seen Spaced, you should check it out. It's uh, Spaced is on Netflix. It's a 10 episode, two seasons. So it's, I think it's like and maybe eight episodes, so 16 episodes total. That's how they do it in England. They do eight episodes uh, per season. And that's where those guys all came about. All of them are from different uh, comedy shows on the BBC. But, man, Spaced was amazing. I loved Shaun of the Dead, loved Hot Fuzz. I can't wait for The World's End. I was a fan of the trailer. I, you know, so I, I'm super excited about this film. Uh, it, can't, it can't come out quickly enough. I, I can't wait to see it. And then own all three of them watch them back to back so <laughs> all right let's move on to the next question the next one comes to us from bryant george who writes hey john with the Gotti movie about to come out do you think that we will see more mob movies or even a godfather 4 or a soprano movie hit the big screen i would hope so because it seems as if there have not been no good mob movies at all to come out what would you guys think p.s i'm in love with the show um I mean, I was talking on the show when the, the Gaudi news came out. I was on our show, AMC Movie Talk, and I, I talked about the fact I love mobster movies, especially the good one. There are a lot of garbage ones, and I'm, I don't enjoy garbage ones, but a really well-done mobster movie is really difficult not to love. They're great. And you know what? We talk about possible TV shows to movies all the time, uh, but you mentioned The Sopranos. Sopranos is absolutely one I would love to see them pick up and do a self-contained story after the fact because, you know, a lot of people weren't happy with the way that series ended. They didn't like the final cut to black uh, ending of The Sopranos. Those of you who saw the show, you know what I'm talking about. A lot of people think that means, you know, that Soprano died or maybe he didn't, whatever. I say, just say he didn't die and just do another movie picking up 10 years after, you know, the last season and see where we're at. I would love to see it personally. Uh, I, I know there are a lot of people who wouldn't, who just want to let Sleeping Dogs lie. But what about you, Schnepp? Are you a big fan of mob movies? And what would you think about a Sopranos movie? Hey, listen, I love so <laughs> I love those mob movies. You know what I'm saying? I cut that guy up. Mom, get me some more of that. Where's that knife? Huh? Cut, slice that guy up. Uh, yeah, uh, I love I love gangster films. There's there's been a slew of actually a lot of British uh, gangster movies in the last few years. Check out uh, I think it was called uh, a Gangster Number One. It had a uh, Malcolm McDowell was in it. It was a it was a pretty a pretty fun film. But uh, yeah, I would I would actually love to see a Sopranos movie, and you know it'd be great for it to pick up right where it faded to black, just unfade, and just like have them finish their uh, finish hanging out, and like it doesn't even matter if years passed, you know. Now of course he doesn't look the same today as he does. It'd be kind of right. weird to fade to black and then come back and not. Well, be no, fit. I'm not saying like I, I'm not saying to take place directly after, but just sort of like a metaphorical unfade to black. You uh, know what I mean? It's like I don't know. I think that would be a great idea to do a Sopranos movie. You know. All right. Our fourth question today comes from Ben Bush, who writes, I've recently stumbled across your videos on YouTube, and I'm now finding myself for hours at a time catching up on the latest movie news. Love this show. I just saw Star Trek Into Darkness, and I think this is the best movie so far this year, at least until Superman comes out. That said, 
I was wondering what your thoughts are in comparing Iron Man 3 to Star Trek. I feel Star Trek pulled off a more entertaining movie and storyline than Iron Man 3. Your thoughts. Well, Schnepp, why don't you start? What did you, how would you compare Star Trek Into Darkness with Iron Man 3? Well, I think Baylock <laughs> here, he believes Star Trek Into Darkness is one of the best Star Trek <laughs> movies ever made. Um, <laughs> but I personally, I think it was an amazing film. I loved it. I've got into so many arguments over the last two weeks with like super deep, hardcore Star Trek fans who hated it. <laughs> they were like, the dilithium crystal bridge was not the same size, and Khan's <laughs> origin was different, and they didn't get into the backstory of Khan. And man, or like, Scotty would never resign, or, you know, <laughs> all the side characters weren't given enough. Bones wouldn't talk like this. <laughs> or the, even the little things, like the little, like, when Bones is talking about, like, ah, when I get delivered three Gorn's children, and they were like, <laughs> I didn't like those little references. People are just loving to hate on this new Star Trek in the darkness. I think it's a fantastic film. And it's super creative, a great, a great new story that takes place in a brand new universe that has nothing to do with the old Star Trek universe. So it doesn't matter if, you know, sorry, spoilers, if someone else yells Khan. I mean, people are getting like really bagged out with like, I can't believe they they use the same dialogue and this and that. I was like, you guys got to just chill out, take a break, you know, use that inhaler, you know, and like take a big, deep breath, relax for a minute. And enjoy this as a, a great summer film. I just saw Iron Man 3 again yesterday. What a fantastic film, too. Once again, people hating on the Mandarin twist. I think, I think that was fantastic. And, you know, people saying the Iron Man uh, is uh, the jo Mandarin is the Joker to Iron Man's Batman. It's not true. If you read the comics, you'd see there's multiple different interpretations of the Mandarin. This was a great twist that a lot of people never saw coming. So you'll never see this coming. I, I didn't see it coming. So I think they're both great films. I can't. They're different, too. One's a superhero film. One's a science fiction film. They're both amazing. You should see both of them. Yeah. You know, it's funny. On AMC Movie Talk earlier today, this kind of came up about Iron Man. Here's the thing. I mentioned on, on, on those shows, and I'll mention it here again, that if you read the comic book fanatic forums... And, you know, you and I are comic book fans, too. Yeah. But if you read those forums, you'd think that Iron Man 3 is one of the worst films in history. If you read the hardcore Star Trek fan forums, and you and I are Star Trek fans. Yeah. But if you read the hardcore forums, the Star Trek forums, you think that Star Trek Into Darkness is one of the worst films ever made. But this just goes to point out something I've been saying for a long time. Hardcore genre fans are not in touch with the general movie-going public. Because you look at Iron Man, it's got basically an 80% critic rating. It's got an 85% audience rating. Star Trek Into Darkness, same thing. Big critic rating and big audience rating. And these are people who just want to go and see a movie and appreciate it for what it is and not what they think it should have been. And, and that's where you get these problems. You, like these, I, I couldn't believe it when I talked to some people that hated, were hating on the new Star Trek movie because... Oh, well, Khan wouldn't have done this and this and this. It's like, well, he did do it because it's in the movie. He did. That's, that's so right. what happened. do you think? What do you think of him doing it? No, no, he wouldn't have. Okay, get past that. He did it. So what do you think of him doing it? And, you know, it, I think you become such a hardcore fan. And, you know, I'm guilty of this as anybody else. When you're such a hardcore fan of a property, you start to judge a movie by what you think should have happened as opposed to just looking at it and evaluating what did happen. And I think that's really unfortunate. We, we kind of screw ourselves that way as genre fans a lot, I think. All right, let's move on to the next question here. The next question comes from Jake, and Jake says this. Hi, John and everybody there at AMC. Love the show, and I've been hooked ever since my friends introduced me two weeks ago. Oh, well, welcome aboard, Jake. So with J.J. Abrams not directing Star Trek Three, is there a confirmed director yet? Uh, if not, who do you think is a good choice for the director's chair? Keep up the good work. Well, Jake, as far as I know, uh, the answer to that question is no. There is no director on board yet. J.J. Abrams has been announced that he will be a producer on it. But, you know, that word producer in Hollywood, who knows what that means. That might mean he just might show up to the premiere, it might mean he'll be on set every day. I mean, you just have no idea. 
The guy I would like to see direct the next Star Trek, who I think would be a really good fit because I think he's shown himself really well for, for his different take on sci-fi, being able to tell a great story, yet exciting at the same time, uh, is Ryan Johnson, the guy who directed Looper. Um, I loved Looper. Absolutely love that. I, I am flabbergasted that more people didn't go out to see it. You know, this is one of those films when everybody says, oh, Hollywood doesn't do more original stuff. They, they don't take chances. Oh, yeah? Well, they did take a chance. They made Looper, and it was awesome, and you didn't go see it. Why didn't you go support it? Because it was great. It was original. It was a wonderful movie, and you didn't go support it. So no right to complain anymore. Um, but yeah, Ryan Johnson's guy. I would love to go. Uh, would would love to see pick up the reins. What about you, Schnepp? Um, who would you like to see try to pick up the next Star Trek film? You know what? After seeing Star Trek Into Darkness and uh, and just the way every the whole movie summed up, I personally would love to see them do a ten episode television series and then do the third movie because it it just felt to me like wow we're really going on a five-year mission now can we please do a couple of episodes on tv and just pay every single person from the cast a million bucks each <laughs> for every episode and just do 10 episodes and bring in all the sci-fi writers bring in a bunch of different directors and let's do the new star trek television series with the new cast and then do a third movie i mean it would you could shoot them all back to back. I mean, you, movies now like Game of Thrones is like every episode is like five, seven million dollars each. I think that's the way to go. So me, me personally, I think that's a great pick that you got, Ryan Johnson. I haven't really thought about who's going to pick up the, the, the third movie, but my mind has been kind of like, man, just do a television series already, you know, with this cast. And let them rock. You know, it's like do 10 episodes. Do it on HBO. Do it. I mean, that's what I'd love to see. All right. Our next question comes to us from Chris and Chris Snyder writes, Hey guys, I've been watching the show for a while now and I just can't get enough of it. John is the man. Thank you. Anyway, my question is about the next Bourne movie. I think it would be a really cool idea if Jason Bourne and Aaron Cross teamed up in the next movie. Do you think we will ever see that on screen or do you think it's an interesting idea at all? What are your thoughts? Schnepp? Let's start with you. What would you think about seeing Aaron Cross and Jason Bourne together? I think it's a great idea. I mean, it's kind of like, I mean, they did that with Mission Impossible with Jeremy Renner and Tom Cruise. So this would be a little bit t Jeremy Renner. Uh, Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Um, it does. I don't know if that would happen, though. I think it's sort of like what Matt Damon uh, would just either take come back as Jason Bourne or they would continue with Aaron Cross. I don't, I don't see them doing a team up, even though they both kind of like when the last movie ended, Aaron Cross, you know, it kind of, they, they crossed over in the time zone. So it could actually happen in, in the next movie. So. I'd be really interested in that. Uh, this, this almost has like an Avengers feel to it. Of course you got right. Iron Man and then you got Captain America. And so, yeah, I, I could see it. I think I'd love to. I don't, however, think that Matt Damon Despite what he's said in a few interviews, I don't think Matt Damon has a lot of interest in coming back to Born Again. Right. Um, I mean, who knows? He's doing a lot of different stuff right now. I loved his episode on uh, Don Cheadle's show, House of Lies. I know not a lot of people watch that show, but Matt Damon was on one episode as himself, and <clears throat> he was brilliant on it. He's got that new HBO movie, uh, The Candelabra, that he's doing I with just Michael saw Douglas. It. it is incredible. Was it Matt really good? Damon, Matt Damon is inc I laugh. I could not stop laughing. It is so – Soderbergh nails it. It's so funny. Michael Douglas is incredible. Rob Lowe steals the show as a plastic surgeon freakazoid. It's incredible. I mean, anybody who hasn't seen Behind the Candelabra, you are missing one of the funniest – shows you could possibly watch it's it's bizarre insane and it's very very good it's a very good film yeah and that's the kind of stuff that that we see matt damon doing now and and i think he's kind of put uh born behind now when you ask him straight up in an interview he'll say he'll leave the door open but i think that's just lip service i don't actually think he has any intention but if he did i'd love to see him and aaron cross together i mean i think that'd be a really cool idea all right Next question right now comes from Luis Zapata, who writes, Hey, John and team, I'm a big fan of the show. Have you heard anything on the new Jimi Hendrix movie that was going to be made? The last I heard was that they were having trouble on getting the rights for the songs to use in the movie. 
I think it would be awesome to get a Hendrix movie. I know you, John, that's me, said you were not a big fan of artists' biopics, but Hendrix was one of the ultimate guitarists who really did change the way the guitar was played. What do you think, and have you heard anything? Um, yeah, that's true. I'm not a big fan of, of music biopics, but there are exceptions. There are a couple I've, I've enjoyed. I just think there are people in the world who've actually changed the world a lot more, who deserve, who've done heroic things and noble things that deserve to have biopics made more than musicians. Uh, that's, that's just my opinion. And, but there are a couple of good ones. Hendrix is a fascinating one, and you're right. Not only did they have trouble getting the rights to the music, they actually failed to get the rights to the music. Uh, they've actually finished shooting the movie. Andre 3000 uh, is playing Jimi Hendrix. They finished shooting the movie in Ireland, uh, I think about six months ago they finished. And they were not able to get any of the rights to any J Jimi Hendrix music. You are not going to hear any Jimi Hendrix songs in the Jimi Hendrix biopic, which is <laughs> really kind of weird. Um, uh. But I, I got to tell you, I... <clears throat> The thing I love about Jimi Hendrix is his music. If there's not, if you're not even going to have his music in it, I, I, I'm telling you, I don't know how much interest I have in seeing it at all. What about you, Schnapp? Does the fact that they weren't able to secure any of the rights to the music alter your anticipation for a film on Jimi Hendrix? It completely, yeah, it makes me completely not want to see it. Is what happens. <laughs> they should just call it the Jimi Chendrix, or it's like make it a comedy or something. Yeah, Bimby Hendrix. <laughs> and uh, they just have that like just a vanilla ice it and make it some kind of bizarre alternate universe. Put it in the Star Trek bubble, like have Spock show up. I don't know what to tell you, man. It's over. Can't if you made a Hendrix movie and you can't use Jimi Hendrix music. What do you make? Do what do you? All right, it's just a biopic, and every time he goes on stage, you just cut, and then it's him like doing drugs and on acid somewhere. So <laughs> now, from what I understand, they're actually going to use. Music from the era, just before he got big, and you're going to see Jimi Hendrix in the movie, I guess, Andre 3000 is going to be like recording some Beatles tunes and some other tunes that were popular at the time that you can get the rights for, but apparently, yeah, the Hendrix, the Hendrix estate just said, no, we're not letting wow. anybody use the music in movies, so I, I don't know what the point is. <laughs> at that point, what's the point of having a Jimi Hendrix? Like, can you imagine there being... Oh, I, I don't know, a, a, like a Richie Valens movie without being able to play La Bamba. You know what they should do? They should, the Jimi Hendrix movie, they should like be like, a, 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 a title card will come up and be like, now play Purple Re Purple Haze. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so then you're at home watching it, and then you play Purple Haze. Then the movie, after you're done listening to the entire song, then you press, press play on your recorder, you know, so... I mean, I think make it an interactive, uh, fun, exciting uh, Jimi Hendrix biopic, you know. All That's right. the way to do it. Okay, our last question of the day comes from Isaiah Dennis, who writes, Do you think there will be a Transformers prequel trilogy, since each film explained a part that occurred during the war front? i got to be honest with you, Isaiah. I, that's an interesting idea. The idea of actually doing a prequel, going back to Cybertron and seeing the Cybertonian Wars. I, I think there's something fascinating about that idea. Um, it'll give you an opportunity to use characters who are now dead. I mean, see the rise of Megatron. See how Optimus you know, rose to become the Prime. Um, I mean, it would be absolutely epic. I mean, it would all be CG. The whole thing would have to be CG. No humans, no nothing, no real world stuff, just all CG. For me, yeah, I, I think it's a really cool sounding idea. Sign me up for it. Schnepp, what about you? Do you think, you, would you be, number one, would you be interested in a Transformers prequel set of films and if so, what do you think the likelihood of something like that could actually happen? Uh, I wouldn't be interested in it, but honestly, I mean, for Transformers fans, that sounds like a great TV series. I mean, they could just mine the heck out of the prequel, all the all the you know information that's set up. They could do an entire like two, three seasons, similar to like the Clone Wars. They could have you know a lot of fun, especially since it's all CG. So that would be great for like Hasbro. Get on that, you know. <laughs> Well, all right, folks, listen, that will do it for us. We've run out of questions for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, before you do anything else, while I've got you, stop what you're doing, take a second, and click that subscribe button. Become a subscriber to our AMC Movie News YouTube channel. It'll keep up to date on everything going on in the world of movie news and, of course, our daily AMC Movie Talk Show and our several times a week AMC Mailbag Show. Once again, email in your questions to us. Send them to amcmovietalk at gmail.com. That's amc 
Once again, that's amcmovietalk at gmail.com. Maybe we can get it on this show or maybe we can get it on AMC Movie Talk, one of the two. So until next time, I want to thank our very special guest, Mr. John Schnepp. John, where can people find you online? Oh, just uh, come to uh, Twitter, at John Schnepp. Just uh, add me and I'll be able to tell you as as things c- happen with the Superman Lives documentary and my other films and th- stuff, I'll just keep you updated. So, All right. Thanks to John. And most of all, thank you to you guys. Listen, the most important part of these shows, of course, is not what we have to say. It's what you have to say. Make sure you jump on down to the comment section. Leave your thoughts on any or all the topics that we discuss here today. So until next time, my name is John Campion for AMC Movie News. Bye-bye.